Namaste. We are going to discuss 2022 paper 4 ethics question number 4a. Look at the question. Question says, uh, what do you understand by the term good governance? How far recent initiatives in terms of good governance have uh, good governance steps taken by a state have helped beneficiaries discuss with suitable examples? There are two parts of this question. Mind it, this is part one and this is part two. All right. All right. So what do you understand by good governance has to be explained and some examples has to be given for e-governance in e-governance benefits as well as e-governance uh, loop also. So look at this. First question is directly answered here. There is no need to, this, this itself will serve as the intro. Good governance refers to governance with values. Governance with values like efficiency, effectiveness, transparency, accountability, morality, etc. Oh, what is actually the value in governance is good. All right. Present day. Now, this is the first step where we define good governance with the values. Then we are going to bring it towards the present context. Present day good governance have a citizen-centric approach. This is very important to understand that it has got citizen-centric approach. It is bottom-up in nature with inclusive and sustainable approach. Ah, this is very clear. Now, now we'll come to the second part of the question. Since we have given two paragraphs for what is good governance, we are going to have the second part of the question. Ah, recent initiative of e-governance has helped stakeholders in different ways. Ah, for example, some recent government initiatives, uh, examples, this is again nothing but the, here you can also write example of the recent government initiative, main st major stakeholder and the benefits. So we are going to write the positive points in these three paragraphs. So look at this, here you will have the C-Box Himmat app it will be for women. What benefit it will accrue? It will accrue women empowerment, reducing communication gap between women and government. We have to give the complete information. Uh, and then for education, you will have Diksha portal and Swam portal. For students, it is increasing accessibility of students with respect to the knowledge, affordability, awareness, and availability. Hmm. Eggmarknet and e-name, e enam. That will be for the farmers. Look at this. What it is going to do? What how it is going to benefit for increased bargaining power, reduced stress, income security. So mind it, all the points which are written is written with the perspective of ethics. Hmm. Not to be very factual, paper three perspective, but this is ethical perspective which we are writing. Digital India or Pragati scheme in administration to bring transparency, in, in, in accountability, openness, and responsiveness. Look at this DigiLocker or Jam Trinity for citizen. It will be empowering citizen. Uh, it will bring efficiency. It will reduce complexity. That will that that means it will bring simplicity and it will also make uh, the data easy available for the citizen. Uh, but the question is how far? So that's why you will have to give the negative aspect of it also. So despite these benefits, sorry, uh, despite these benefits, there are certain hindrances in effective utilization of recent e-government schemes such as, such as digital divide brings exclusivity for di digitally illiterate. Uh, this is how you can write. Uh, then digital connectivity brings more Cyber vulnerability, for example, what kind of cyber vulnerability you write about cyber threats, cyber wars, cyber terrorism, etc. All right. Uh, uh, digital privacy and security concern puts a question mark on reliable, reliability of e-government's efforts. So, all right. So, this is again the concern here which is highlighted data privacy and security. Recent initiatives of cyber bullying has also raised concerns of inclusivity and equity of e-government schemes. Ah, for example, here targeting a particular community on cyber platform, this is happening very frequently. So you do not write the name of the community, but you can write the idea what you wanted to say. So that's why some of the community is exclusive, is, uh, you know, alienated from the government, uh, recent e-governance initiatives, which are there. So complexity in e-governance platform, sometimes the platforms are very com uh, complex. Lack of digital infrastructure raised concerns among the beneficiaries, ah, for example, for example, um, for example, certain forms which are open and it is very complex to fill that form or it is very complex to get the services. For example, the complexity in application of solar panels online is very complex. You go and there was one article regarding that, that uh, people who need solar, solar panel uh, most are not able to uh, get the solar panel on time. All right. So this is, look at this, for this 10 marker question, we have already given 10 points. 
and two paragraphs for the first part. Now we are moving towards conclusion. In conclusion, we have to indicate towards the future. E-governance should be supported with moral principles. Yes. What should be those moral principles? Leading those content. That is citizen centricism should be the key to e-governance or should be the core of e-governance. This will shape a future of efficient administration and of empowered citizens. So that is what the future is there. All right. So this is the complete answer. So thank you. Stay connected. Namaste.